I love this quote from Bethany Hamilton, the um, amazing athlete who lost a limb with a shark attack. Bethany Hamilton says this of courage. She says, courage doesn't mean you don't get afraid. Courage means you don't let fear stop you. I love that, someone needs to hear that. Courage doesn't mean that you don't feel fear. It means that you don't let fear stop you. And the reality is all of us will be afraid. I mean, it starts when you're a kid. You know, the principle, like if, if a closet door is left cracked open, you can legally be afraid of the monster inside. And if you, if you close the door, it seals the monster shut. Also, if you leave a limb hanging over the edge of the bed, you better be afraid that the monster under the bed will reach up and grab you and pull you underneath the bed. And so you keep your limbs in. And then if you go to the bathroom, you have to jump over the reach and you go to the bathroom. Then you have to watch out for the potential bad guy behind the shower curtain. To this day, if I walk into a room with a shower curtain, I'm gonna pull, because we're naturally, we tend to fear, but God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. And as leaders, we're often afraid. I like to say, if you're not afraid every now and then, you're not leading by faith. We all are afraid. And you may fear a difficult conversation with somebody. You may fear rejection as a leader. You may fear criticism as a leader. Based on all the years that I've been leading, it's my opinion that the most common fear that a leader faces is the fear of failure. We're so afraid of failing. We don't wanna do something and have it not come to pass. We fear failure. And I'll tell you right now, honestly, for me, that is, that is a driving fear that I have to fight through all the time, all the time being afraid, even back from my early days of preaching. In fact, I used to lead a Bible study in college that grew quite large, and I never, ever one time ever taught the Bible study, ever, because I was afraid of not being qualified. And then early in the years when my pastor made me preach, my face used to blotch and when I was preaching, and before I'd preach, I'd always vomit in a bucket. I'd be, you know, like prayer time, in Jesus' name, blah, I'd vomit in a bucket, and then I'd go out and preach. And so thankfully, I've grown through that. Now I just throw up in my mouth, I swallow it, you know, and I'm good to go. And I'm kind of joking about that, but it's, it's, it's often when you press through that fear that you find yourself in the place that God wants you to be. And so for me, even to this day, I fear being inadequate as a communicator. And what I do every time before I speak, and it's very special to me, is I take one step forward. I, step, I take one step forward, and what I'm saying in my mind is, I'm stepping out of my insecurities, I'm stepping out of my flesh, I'm stepping out of my fears, I'm stepping into the power of God, I'm stepping into the office of the pastor, I'm stepping into the truth of God's word, and it's a single step forward. I love to say it this way, and some of you, you need to hear this. The pathway to your greatest potential is often straight through your greatest fear. Let me say it again, this is gonna hit somebody. The pathway to your greatest potential is often straight through your greatest fear. There may be someone here, it's time to take a step of faith, one step forward. You're, you're afraid, you have the courage just to step out, the courage to say, God, I don't know what's gonna happen, I, I'm going to obey you. The courage to start a ministry, the courage to start a campus, the courage to start a, a new product line in your business, to, to, to write a book, to start the blog, to, to mentor somebody, whatever it is, oftentimes it's that step through that which you're afraid of, the courage to press through that will open the door to exactly where God wants you to be. Every single day I look back and think about the different steps of faith. I mean, even the fact that we're here today was stepping through my greatest fear of failure in starting the church. You look at it now and think, well, it's easy. Life Church obviously worked. In the beginning days, we had absolutely nothing. I was scared to death. The only thing we owned was an overhead projector. Many of you right now don't know what an overhead projector is. You can Google it and find out what it is. It was the only thing we owned and we were in a little two car garage and we had uh, the only volunteer role we had was a guy named Jerome, who was an ex-drug dealer that became a Christian that got a finger shot off in a drug deal that went bad. And Jerome was my transparency flipper. That was the only role we had. And so we'd shine the words of the screen up onto the edge of the garage and Jerome, the, the four-fingered transparency flipper, would try to, try to move the things while people were trying to worship. And the whole time when they're trying to worship, you can see them counting. They're looking up at the screen going, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's about all they could do. And I was scared to death every single week. Are you going to be afraid? Yes. 
Are you gonna feel the fear as, as, as a leader? Yes. Have the courage to take one step forward. Have the courage to feel the fear and do something anyway. Courage is not that fear goes away, it's that you step through the fear. Who does God love to use? He loves to use courageous idiots who have no idea what cannot be done because they're trusting God that all things are possible. God